Alright. Uh, what's happening, fellas, ladies? Uh, if you've already seen, uh, well, okay, let me start this way. What What is in front of you here is the Xiaomi A3 and the Pixel 3a. See how many times I screw that up. Uh, you've already seen me compare the cameras on both. This guy has a 48 megapixel. Oh my god, this heater is asleep. Alright, what's happening, guys? Before me, I have two phones. Two budget class phones. One more budget than the other. This one here is the Xiaomi A3, and this is the Pixel 3a. So, I'm making this video kind of to help myself out, and maybe you as well, if for some reason you're trying to decide between the two, or you're comparing these two, um, which is what I'm doing. Uh, uh, my use case is I just need a second line for Jay's Golf and Jay's Photo uh, that is associated with my, I use the carrier Ting. So I'm sure if you go to j.ting.com, you'll get some kind of discount code because there must be some guy out there named Jay that they subsidize, but it ain't me. But I still like their service because if I don't get any phone calls and I don't use any data, my bill is usually eight to ten bucks. So, that, all that said, one of the things I was about to send the Pixel back and keep the Xiaomi. And what gave me pause and what has yielded these to be in this video next to each other and still be in my possession is because when I looked on Ting's site, and looked up both phones. I've been using this phone for a few weeks, and I just got this one a week ago. Is that on Ting's site, they support 4G for the Google Pixel 3a. For the Xiaomi, the highest speed that they support is 3G. I thought that was very strange and odd and interesting. I don't know if that's because when you unbox this, and I'm sure you've watched other, if you're watching this, you probably watch other YouTubers tell you all about the specs and the dragon glass and the uh, gorilla glass and the alligator glass and the snapdragon this and all the other stuff. Uh, I'm not really into all that, or at least qualified to rattle that off the top of my head. I do know the battery is better on the Xiaomi, I'd tell you that, just in my usage. Uh, where the hell was I going with that? Um, oh yeah. The fact that this comes from China and comes with a charger that I guess is used in Malaysia and India, I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with the fact that Ting so far is only allowing 3G speeds on this hardware. I don't know. If someone can answer that for me, um, I'm t talking to you, Ting. I could use a sponsorship. Uh, you know, hit me, hit me with a DM somewhere. Uh, but if somebody can answer that question for me, do uh, write me a comment. That'd be cool, because uh, that would factor into this. Because that's really one of the main reasons that I haven't sent this one back. Because I was almost going to keep this one. And here's why: hardware-wise, you just saw that pop up, right? Well. Bingo, it has a fingerprint reader under the glass on the front. I'm used to that, and it's the whole reason I have not upgraded to uh, an, a newer iPhone because the face unlock plus the gesture doesn't work for me. And I'll go into that right now because this one has face unlock. Now, if you look real quick, as to what my hand does, other than hit the sleep wake button to look at it, to unlock it. As, boom, I looked at it and unlocked. My hand didn't move, i.e. there was no secondary gesture necessary for me to unlock it with my face. 
I just have to look at it. Now, with the new iPhones, you have to use a gesture, and you can probably gather where I'm going with this. When I would use a gesture, I would typically either drop the phone or I would catch it like this and I'd touch something if I did unlock it that I didn't want to touch and open an application that I didn't want to open. And again, you have to pick it up off the tabletop, usually. Now with this, you still do have to pick it up because the, ooh, look at that, the fingerprint reader is on the back. But the fingerprint reader is fast. Now why is this? There you go. Uh, fingerprint reader is on the back and as pixels are known for, they're quite fast. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. But as far as bang for your buck, this guy, the Xiaomi A3, pretty much nails it. This, the only thing that makes me pause, other than the carrier issue, which is specific probably only to Ting. A friend of mine bought this and put it on AT&T and has no problems, so it's Ting specific probably. So, the, the, I guess the other thing is the display on the Pixel is 1080 and the display on the Xiaomi is 720. Now, I'm really not using this for consumption of data or or media. I'm using my iPhone, honestly. I'm using this just as a secondary line to make and receive phone calls and uh, photos, honestly. And if we're talking about that with the photo deal, this, let's see if it unlocks. There we go. Uh, this is far more versatile because you have the uh, application that comes with the Xiaomi stock and using that application a couple things you have the access to the 48 megapixel which yields about a 32 uh, uh, megabyte file 20 to 30 average depending on uh, what you've taken a photo of I guess uh, so it's a pretty big file, but it allows the SIM tray allows you to put up to 256. I think that's a limit, but right now I have 128 gig uh, micro SD in there, so I have no trouble with regard to storage because both of these are 64 gig. Um, that's all you can get. Uh, so getting back to this and the versatility of it, uh, if you're going to use the HDR function get into that real quick so right now it's on the 48 megapixel if I try to turn hello it's not exactly responsive is it there you go if I try to turn HDR on it kicks it back into the 12, 12 megapixel um, usage it won't let you utilize the 48 megapixel with HDR now you can go into the pro mode over here and it automatically goes to the 48 and then you can fiddle with the f-stop the white balance and all that so i don't think you can bracket with this phone but we're getting into the weeds with that but the versatility factor here is that you can load the google camera apk onto here and it supports the one that i loaded and I'll link it down below uh, if you're if you're interested. It has every functionality that I can I can tell as as the stock uh, Pixel does. So the APK I loaded has the HDR, but it only uses the 12 megapixel camera that's on the back here, uh, which is kind of a bummer. It'd be pretty freaking awesome if I could figure out a way to make it use the 48 megapixel. Uh, but the final thing that I'll say, and this is totally specific. There you just saw the back of my head. I'll probably cut that out. Um, this is very specific to me, is the layout of the 
sleep wake button versus the volume buttons. They're opposite of each other. So on the Xiaomi, the sleep wake is on the bottom and vice versa for the Pixel. Uh, both use the uh, volume rocker as a shutter, but because of the uh, vertical implementation of these lenses, when I use and lefty and I take a photo landscape wise cockeyed, you can see how my knuckle gets in the way of the photo if I try to use the hardware buttons to take a photo. So I find myself using, having to use the um, software based shutter button. Whereas with a pixel, given that it's a single lens and the lens is nowhere near the hardware buttons, that's not an issue. And lastly, it doesn't matter what camera you're using. If, if the camera you're using has optical stabilization, you're going to get a sharper shot. Uh, because you're not going to have camera shake. Uh, the shutter speed during the daylight on this is high enough that I really haven't had a problem. But in low light, the Pixel uh, blows this out of the water with regard to allowing uh, you to take a clearer shot at night. So those are all the things that I can think of that differ between the two that uh, pertain to me and my concerns and the way that I may or may not use these phones um, and I'm really I'm still even though the Ting doesn't support 4G at least right now maybe that'll change I'm still leaning towards the Xiaomi because it seems to be the best bang for my buck given that it's my secondary phone that if I'm going to actually do something with it, uh, meaning upload media or what have you, it's usually going to be on Wi-Fi. I'm not going to be using the Ting uh, uh, data plan all that much. Never really did uh, use uh, my iPhone to do that and or Tether, etc. So, I don't know. Uh, like I I'm making this video kind of more for myself, maybe, but I'm recording it as I'm kind of thinking aloud and reviewing these two phones. So if you're considering either one of them and anything that I've said in this in this video um, may or may not pertain to you as as a layman speak, again, you can go to any number of uh, YouTube channels that will tell you all the specs and all that if you're gonna geek out on it but in everyday use case the versatility of this phone for what it costs uh, really has me I'm kind of convincing myself right now that I'm gonna keep this and send this one back just because bang for the buck and the versatility of it and now if it was my everyday phone, I would probably keep a pixel if I'm keeping it honest. So again, hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully you dug it. If you did, you know what to do. That helps me out a lot, especially because uh, good old YouTube demonetized the living hell out of me because I decided to put a couple Game of Thrones videos up there. So yeah, that's where it is. Maybe I'll get back into reviewing tech stuff. Uh, maybe not phones, because um, this is like a one-off case. But now I'm rambling. I'm sure you love that. But you come here. If you're coming here, you know that it's going to be a long video. So if you watch this long, I appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> Later.